tiba-tiba putus guys nggak tahu error error ya guys tiba-tiba error guys Yuk, set keempat ini. Set keempat sementara. Uh, yuk, yuk, yuk. Semangat, semangat, semangat. Unggul ya, unggul. Set keempat unggul 5 2. Sementara. 5 2. Uh, yuk, yuk. Oke, terima kasih teman-teman sudah balik ke channel ya, lagi. Unggul. Tadi error ya, tiba-tiba mati sendiri ya. 5 2. Sempat 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 5 3. Ya. Oke, terima kasih teman-teman sudah balik ke channel lagi. Tadi error ya, tiba-tiba mati sendiri ya. 5 2. Sempat sempat 5 3. Ya. Oke, terima kasih teman-teman sudah balik ke channel lagi. Enam tiga, yo yo yo, bisa yo bisa. Lilo udah masuk guys, Lilo udah masuk ke lapangan. Enam tiga, yo yo yo, bisa yo bisa. Lilo udah masuk guys, Lilo udah masuk ke lapangan. Enam tiga, yo yo yo, bisa yo bisa. Lilo udah masuk guys. bisa bisa ya fokus ya ulangin set ketiga ya kayak mat langsung ambiar off ini bisa bisa ya fokus ya ulangin set ketiga ya kayak mat langsung ambiar off ini bisa bisa ya fokus ya nampak sementara ya nampak tujuh empat ya guys nampak blok ya tapi bola kena yang tujuh empat Fokus, ya. fokus ya, fokus. Yes, 
masuk guys matchnya Jia uh, ya masuk tengah-tengah posisi di tengah yes masuk guys matchnya Jia uh, nah, ya kan ada tadi sempat mati ya left saya yes masuk guys matchnya Jia ya kan ada tadi sempat mati ya left saya yes masuk guys matchnya Jia ya kan ada tadi Interval ya, time out 84 untuk keunggulan respak. Yo, fokus fokus respak, bisa yo. 31 bisa yo. Interval ya, time out 84. Bila udah masuk ya. Fokus respak, bisa yo. 31 bisa yo. Interval ya, time out 84. Bila udah masuk ya. Fokus respak, bisa yo. 31 bisa yo. Yo, Jia, Mega, Bang Gangawan, semangat terus yo. Jangan kendor. Ya, mega semangat terus yuk. Jangan aduh, guys. Ada ada Bola penerimaan resep dari Libero. Aduh, guys. Sudah melebar ya. 94. Bola penerimaan resep dari Libero. Aduh, sudah melebar ya. 94. Bola penerimaan resep dari Libero. lima sembilan yes 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 gagal ya semes mek keras mega menghantam seorang gilo guys semes keras mega menghantam gilo guys gagal ya semes mek keras mega menghantam gilo guys semes keras mega menghantam gilo guys gagal ya semes keras mega menghantam gilo guys gagal ya semes keras mega menghantam Oke, okay. mantu guys. Oke, okay, masih bisa. Oke, mantu guys. Aduh guys, aduh, 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 aduh. Oke, masih. Sebelas lima. Aduh, bola gagal. Aduh guys, aduh, 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 aduh. Oke, masih. Sebelas lima. Aduh, bola gagal. Aduh guys, aduh, 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 aduh. fokus pasti bisa nih. Iya. Ah, do 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 do. 12 6 guys. Smash mega melebar. Gagal diantisipasi blokernya ya. Kena touch out. Ah, do 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 do. 12 6 guys. Mas 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 Time out untuk pink speeder. Time out untuk pink speeder. Dua belas enam, guys ya. Bukan dua belas lima, itu dua belas enam. Time out untuk pink speeder. Time out untuk pink speeder. 
12 6 guys ya bukan 12 5 12 6 12 6 guys ya bukan 12 5 12 6 12 6 guys ya bukan 12 5 12 6 12 7 guys mes keras tim 12 6 guys 12 7 guys mes keras tim 12 6 12 7 guys mes keras tim 12 6 12 7 guys 13 7 13 7 13 7 yuk 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 jangan kendor yuk jangan kendor kasih kencang terus kurang errornya yuk 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 jangan kendor yuk jangan kendor yuk bisa yuk kasih kencang terus kurang errornya Yes, 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 Smash Mega, guys. Bisa ada diantisipasi oleh barisan pertahanannya, Smash Mega, guys. 14 yes, 7. Yes, 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 Smash Mega, guys. Bisa ada diantisipasi oleh barisan pertahanannya. Ah, masuk, guys. 14 7. Yes, 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 Smash Mega, guys. Bisa ada diantisipasi oleh barisan pertahanannya. Ah, masuk, guys. 14 7. Yes, 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 Smash Mega, guys. Bisa ada diantisipasi oleh Ada Smash Reina guys masuk 814. Oke ya 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 ayah ayah. Opa siapa yang diumbar? Omega. Oke, tipuan dari Mega, guys. 15 8. Tipuan dari Mega. Harus bermain cerdik nih ya. Set keempat. Harus bermain cerdik, jangan sampai terpancing emosi. Jangan sampai terpancing emosi. Harus konsisten. Oke, okay, Smash Willow masuk ya. <tuh> Aduh, gagal blokernya ya. Tanpa celah blokernya. Aduh, aduh. Aduh, 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 guys, blokernya gagal. 169, time out. Ya, 169 time out. Ya. Jangan sampai kejadian sama set ketiga ya. Udah habis time out, ngendor ya. Nah, habis time out, ngendor, tertinggal jauh. Fokus konsisten. Tadi sempat mati live streamingnya guys ya. Gak tahu kenapa mati. Tiba-tiba mati dari live streaming. Live scorenya tiba-tiba mati. Gak tahu. Tiba-tiba ya. laptopnya ngelak. Ya, ini back lagi. Balik lagi kita. Tak kawal Mega sampai menang. Yo yo yo, 169. Yes, aduh. Ya, ya kena blok lagi. Ah, oke. Okay. Yuk fokus lagi. 
Jia masuk smash ya guys 179 hancurkan pink speeder nah, smash dia konsisten ya Jia smash nya outside hitter oke okay. yes oh keluar guys smash nya willow keluar ya nggak tahu ini ada ada pintu pak oh video pantopel guys video pantopel smashnya willow tadi sempat keluar ya kita lihat video pantopel lagi smashnya willow ya apa terkena touch out smashnya willow Apakah Smash nya Willow terkena touch out? Kita belum lihat ya Apakah Smash nya Willow terkena touch out? Apakah Smash nya Willow terkena touch out? Kita belum lihat ya Apakah Smash nya Willow terkena touch out? Apakah Smash nya Willow terkena touch out? Kita belum lihat ya Apakah Smash nya Willow terkena touch out? Nomor 20 Pink Speaker masuk ya Lantang Reina Apakah Smash nya Willow terkena touch out? Nomor 20 pink speaker masuk ya pelantang Reina belum lihat ya. Apakah smash-nya Willow terkena touch out? Nomor 20 pink speaker masuk ya pelantang Reina belum lihat ya. Apakah smash-nya Willow terkena touch out? Nomor 20 pink speaker masuk ya pelantang Reina belum lihat ya. Apakah smash-nya Willow terkena touch out? Nomor 20 pink speaker masuk ya pelantang Reina belum lihat ya. Apakah smash-nya Willow terkena touch out? Nomor 20 pink speaker masuk ya pelantang Reina belum lihat ya. Apakah smash-nya Willow terkena touch out? Nomor 20 pink speaker masuk ya pelantang Reina belum lihat ya. Apakah smash-nya Willow terkena touch out? Nomor 20 pink speaker masuk ya pelantang Reina belum lihat ya. Bisa, 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 yo. Awalkan 20, yo. Bisa, 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 bisa,
kemangan jangan sampai oleng kemangan jangan sampai oleng bisa ya bisa bisa yo awalkan 20 ya Nesbia kena blocker ya. Nesbia kena blocker ya. Nesbia kena blocker ya. Baru masih unggul respak ya 19 12 Baru masih unggul respak ya 19 12 Baru masih unggul respak ya 19 12 Oke, okay, 2012 ya. Oke, okay, ini kali ini smash dia. Masuk. Touch ball, touch ball. Masuk ya. Oke, okay, kali dari plus mendung ya. barisan pertahanan ini smash dia. Masuk. Touch ball, touch ball. Masuk ya. Oke, okay, kali ini nomor berapa? Barisan pertahanan ke Mas ya. Masuk. Touch ball, touch ball. Aduh, Kim kayak marah-marah ya tiba-tiba pula salah-salah aja. Iye. Jia Snesia gagal yang disipasi pada sang pertahanan Jia Snesia gagal dekat dengan kemana? Empat poin lagi Empat poin lagi Jia Snesia gagal dekat dengan kemana? Empat poin lagi Jia Snesia gagal dekat dengan empat poin lagi empat poin lagi guys empat poin lagi ada ada ini kenapa napa ayah aduh ternyata gagal empat poin lagi guys empat poin lagi ada ada ini kenapa napa ayah aduh ternyata gagal empat poin lagi guys empat poin lagi ada ada ini kenapa napa ayah aduh kenapa nih aduh blocker ya out ya tiga dua dua tiga belas tiga poin lagi yo bisa, Kim okay. udah kayaknya udah diem aja Kim Blocker ya, out ya eh, Kim udah diem aja 2, 2, 13 Time out untuk Bisa, Kim udah kayaknya udah diem aja Blocker ya, out ya Kim udah diem aja 2, 2, 13 Karena mental sepertinya Pink Speeder ya Jauh sekali ya Time out untuk Pink Speeder 2, 2, 13 Karena mental sepertinya Pink Speeder ya Jauh sekali ya Time out untuk Pink Speeder apa yang dari yes aduh lagi guys nah, pandai mayam buruk eh enggak nyampe guys aduh 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 yes aduh pasti aja enggak nyampe guys kena mental udah guys eh enggak nyampe guys aduh 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 23 13 pasti enggak nyampe guys kena mental udah guys eh enggak nyampe guys aduh 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 23 13 pasti enggak nyampe guys kena mental udah guys eh enggak nyampe guys aduh 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 Yes, smash. Aduh, gagal guys. Ya, smash bilo mas. Masuk, smash bilo ya. Yes, smash. Aduh, gagal guys. Ya, bilo mas. Masuk, smash bilo ya. Yes, smash. Aduh, gagal guys. Bilo mas. Masuk, smash bilo ya. Yes, smash. Of Celestino of Vietti. I agree, it was a very. Yes, yes. Oh, 
Aspara starts 20 seconds. He's the sole Aspar rider running here in the Grand Prix. Jake Dixon withdrew after Friday's running. Completing your grid, Jalen Massia, Alex Estreet, Dennis Onchu and Chavi Cardoos. Bringing up the rear is Mario Addy. No Jake Dixon, no Chavi Artiga. Both of them are Friday. Yes, we wish all three speedy recoveries and hope all three are back in action doing what they do best. That is Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. Our next port of call in Moto 2 as we rock up in Port of Out at the roller coaster. Aaron Kinnett, third fastest on the Fantic Racing Calyx machine. Just under two tenths away from another pole position was Connect. He's put in that decent long runs on those probably tyres here this weekend, but we said the same, didn't we, in, in uh, Qatar a couple of weeks ago? And having made a, a great start and the early running, Connect eventually found himself back in tenth place at the chequered flag. Tony Arbolino looking to bounce back from what was a very difficult season opener in La Salle. Arbolino was nowhere near the point scoring places, took the chequered flag from fifth on the grid in 20th place. He was 30 seconds away. A rider who pushed Pedro Acosta, kept him honest, all the way to the chequered flag in Moto2 here one year ago. In fighting with Aaron Kinnett as well for the podium. On board then with Japan's Ayagura Lewis, second Grand Prix Moto2 for the new Pirelli era. And it looks like we've got a, a pretty straightforward tyre selection. Yes, of course, in Qatar last time around, it was those on the soft rear tyre, the SC0, who really stormed through the pack towards the end. Every single rider on the grid has that SC0 soft rear tyre. Much more of a split on the front tyre. Amongst our top three rows on the grid, three of the nine are on the SC2 medium front. Those are Kinect, Agura and Chantra. Everyone else in the top ten on the grid are on the softer front. Well, let's hope it was as wild and wonderful as what the season opener in Qatar was a couple of weeks ago because it was so, so tough to call, wasn't it? Coming out on top of the end of it was Alonso Lopez taking his first victory since Philip Arnold in 2022. Does the Spaniard have another ace up his sleeve? He goes from the head of that second row in fourth place. Joe Roberts, we know that he loves Portimao and he sounded very confident, didn't he, on the grid when he spoke to Simon Crafer. A rather pensive-looking Luca Bosca scorer. He's already nibbling the nails away as his riders come to the head of the grid. Can Manu Gonzalez break Bosca Scorer's current domination of this Moto2 World Championship? Five wins in a row now for the Italian brand. Only Calix and Suter have had longer winning streaks in the Moto2 era. Green flag then is cleared at the back of the grid. And it's lights out and we are racing in Moto2 here in Portimao. There was a bit of a stutter there from Aldeguer on the middle of that front row. Gonzalez has nailed it though uh, from pole position. They swoop down the descent into the first corner. Aldeguer though immediately on the inside of Gonzalez up into the lead. Alonso Lopez already wrapping off the line as well. He's gone up from fourth to third and immediately setting about Gonzalez on the inside oh, of the pole oh, man oh. into turn three. We have a Bosca scorer. One, two. Well, one, two, three now because look at Ayagora through into third place up ahead of Manu Gonzalez. Kinect was the big loser off the line. He got away poorly and then was outbraked by Lopez. Kinect down to fifth. Gonzalez was really, really strong away from the line. He, he judged the lights perfectly and just maybe a little bit cautious with a full fuel tank dropping down the hill on the brakes in that first corner. He got picked up by Aldegay. It was a good 10 metres behind him as they launched off the line. Then Lopez picked him off in an aggressive move as well into turn three. Gonzalez then pulled back to four. Not the start that he wanted. You can always trust Tony Arbolino to make plays. He's up off the line. Of course, a pole qualifying for last year's championship runner up in 12th. He's already gained four places. Aldegar leads a Moto2 race. That was a very familiar sight and sound, wasn't it, at the back end of 2023, where he steamrolled to the last four Grand Prix in dominant fashion in all four. Under immediate early pressure here, though, from Lopez. Well, it's a bit of a twitch there, doesn't oh, he? Kinnett, in second one, place, Kinnett's gone wide, and that's going to cost him maybe a couple of places. Arena has come through, and so does Joe Roberts. He's got the inside line here, the Californian, and Kinnett does indeed lose those two spots. Yeah, he's now down to seven, so it's not working out at all for Aaron Kinnett 
out in this opening lap and then with the Boscoscoros away at the front Kinead already with three or four fights between himself and the next of those Boscoscoros the fourth of them incidentally Sergio Garcia surprisingly went backwards off the line he's back to 12th he swapped places essentially with Tony Arbolino so for the first time in 2024 pre-season favourite Fermin Aldegaard leads a Moto2 Grand Prix and he leads it by a quarter of a second over the line from his teammate Lopez there in second place Aya Gura was really good on that first half he's gained four places Gonzalez has not been able to work his way forward having dropped back to fourth after the first three corners a couple of moves into turn one there Cadet made his way back through on Roberts on the downhill descent to turn one and Marcos Ramirez is now on the tail of his teammate as he passed Arbolino into the first corner dream come true signing that two year Ducati contract for Aldeguer pre-port him out dream start to this Portimao Grand Prix as well here in Moto2 as he tries to break away from the chasing number 21 his teammate beat at tall speed up rider Alonso Lopez dare he break away I mean what we saw in Qatar is he going to be a little bit more cautious in these early stages remember what Kinect got up to when he dropped back to ninth on that first lap just stormed back through into the lead and then immediately ran out of time you imagine these Moto2 riders collectively might be a little bit more cautious early on not to take too much out of these tyres certainly wasn't a great first lap for Sergio Garcia on the podium for the first time in Qatar in Moto2 he lost well, he three places Lopez. Comes Lopez. coming from a long long way back Teammates. properly barges through there doesn't he on Aldeguer, no love lost whatsoever between Lopez and Aldeguer. A 54 will not like that at all, will he? That was aggressive by Lopez. We know he's not scared, is he, to sharpen the old elbows, Lopez. He's been caught up in a couple of controversial incidents in the past, hasn't he? Not exactly on Jake Dixon's <laughs> Christmas card list after a, a couple of tangles last year. And he properly put a one on there on his teammate Aldeguer, didn't he, at turn 13? Well, he said in guitar or post guitar, I'm going to be more calm in the early stages, but that wasn't what we saw just then. He's on the inside line here for Aldegar and sweeps across his front tyre. This is keeping the front pack nicely closed together. So it's a speed up Oscar Scura, 1-2, Agura 3rd, and then 4th and 5th for the Grassini duo. Gonzalez ahead of Arena, who's the fastest rider on track. Might be a bit of red mist inside Aldegar's helmet right now. He's heading to a red Ducati next year, but just got to keep his cool and composure here because that was a proper bar true, wasn't it? On the inside of turn 13 from Lopez. Coming from a long way back there was Gonzalez trying to find a way through on Agura down the hill into turn five there's no way through both the Grazzini bikes have had a strong start though to this Grand Prix with Arenas keeping himself in the top five here's a replay then up at 13 top part of this circuit yeah that was a proper, proper, lunge. proper lunge wasn't it now it's a good job there that Aldegar has been committed to pick it up because if he just toughed it out well he could have gone down there and he will not have liked that he would not have liked that one bit and payback might be coming imminently yeah those two of course have fought for a championship against each other before this is Arenas now taking the pole nice. sister Gonzalez Gonzalez will be holding it on the outside he knows we've got a left hander oh, coming oh, oh. next and he holds it up the inside Arenas is surely going to get that one up now because he's on the outside for 13 pretty racing between the two teammates perhaps arguably a slightly cleaner battle than we saw between the teammates out front Teammate, so Aldegar, Aldegar has got a double on that pound. I wow. thought on the line, I thought I could see like he was a little bit hesitant. A jump start and a double long lap penalty then for Fermin Aldegar. Now that does change the whole complexion of this Portuguese Grand Prix. Aldegar then has a double long lap penalty. He did catch my eye as he left the grid. I didn't realise that he jumped the star. He needs to get to the front and clear off there to try and build up some speed. Surely Lopez will see this as they come across the line. Aldegar does go to the front. This is what he has to do now he needs to try and pull out a lead over his teammate because it is a long long lap penalty lane here he goes right around the outside of turn number 14 and Aldegar has got to come through it twice well the red mist might just have cleared from <laughs> yeah. the Lopez move and now it's going to be firmly back, back full in his face isn't it when he sees that on the dashboard his heart is going to sink if you Lopez you just send it at the inside here of Aldegar and just yeah. keep him in the pack he's gone full send as well and coming in here that's run Aldegar a little bit offline just slow him up so Aldegar then with a double long lap penalty. This is not the start of the 2024 that he expected at all, is it? No points in the season opener in Qatar after a, a real tough day beyond the Pirelli tyres. And now he's going to have to come through the long lap penalty, not once, but twice for the jump start. I know our team in the production truck now are going to be working the show as a replay of the illegal start from Aldegar. But this is a game changer for this Grand Prix. It's essentially going to be around a five to six second penalty he's going to get once he served a pair of them add that to his race time now it puts him out of the points entirely 
And who could have imagined a scenario like that going to round three in Austin, Texas in three weeks' time where Aldegar, who was a massive bookie's favourite, that's number one then of the long lap complete or about to be completed for Aldegar. Fermin Aldegay, he's back in 11th position now with one more long lap penalty to go. It's still a Bosca Scora, one and two, but it's Lopez from Gokura, and it's third place now for Aaron Kinnett, who can suddenly sense himself coming back into contention after his poor start. Tiger Tony, fastest rider on circuit, a 142.494 from the Italian on the Elfmark Vidas racing machine. He's in seventh place at the moment, Arbolino. Just under one and a half seconds he was over the line behind your new race leader, Lopez. Oh, can you believe it? What a dramatic start to the new season. Fermin Aldegaard out of the points and nowhere. So far off the podium pace he was in Qatar. Now with a double long lap penalty to contend with here in Portimao. A top 10 going to be a bonus here now, isn't it, for Aldegaard? This could be dream ticket for Alonso Lopez. If he can convert this very early days as Connect now moves into second place at the expense of Ayagura. Lopez could potentially be staring at the 50-point game after two races on his teammate Aldegaard at this stage of the season. And the two other riders who were with Lopez on the podium back in Qatar. Garcia's down in 12th and he's battling with the rider that he finished behind in Qatar, Barry Baltas, who's only in 13th at the moment. Yeah, not only is Aldegaard obviously facing... <laughs> Well, he's gone through this time around. He's not taken the second of the long lap he's penalties. He's got five laps to come through yeah. twice. So he's got time. He'll be aware of that. But, of course, a massive early dent in his championship and another opportunity to present himself for Lopez because one of the title contenders pre-season clearly was going to be British Jake Dixon who didn't score a point in Qatar sadly sidelined his legacy of his massive practice crash in Doha but Jake Dixon will be pointless going to Austin in a couple of weeks Connect is getting on with this as well he's down to a 142.485 that is now the fastest lap of this race it was a couple of tenths quicker than Lopez directly ahead of him over the line the gap five and a half tenths yeah it's not a pretty quick pace here at the front of the race because they were doing mid to high 41s in qualifying so 42-4 for Aaron Kinnett is really shifting. We just need to hope from his point of view that he's not making the same mistake he did in Qatar by going too hard too early. He's half a second behind Alonso Lopez. The rider who looks keen to get on with this is Gonzalez in fourth place. Having seen Kinnett go through on Agura on the previous lap, Gonzalez, the pole setter, looks like he's pretty keen to chase off after Kinnett. Repeat podium to Baltus and Garcia. Highly unlikely, you feel, at this early juncture of this 19-lap race. Garcia, 12th, Baltus, 13th. They have just set first the best laps of the Grand Prix. They're doing respectable high 142s, but they've been cut well adrift at this early battle. Will the huge deviation in lap times that we saw in Qatar unfold here again and maybe bring the likes of Baltus and, and Garcia back into contention? We'll, we'll find out, won't we, over the next 15 and a half laps or so. But at the moment, it's all looking comfortable for Alonso Lopez, who's taken a tenth out of Kinect in Sector 2, another tenth out of him in Sector 3, and the Avanti now is building towards seven tenths of a second. Suppose if you're Aldeguer, you wait as long as possible before serving your second long lap penalty. He's gone through again. He's got two more laps to try and serve of it because there's now around about a 1.4 second gap behind him in fact he's overtaken Chantra so he's now back into the top 10 there's a nice gap opening up between Chantra and Garcia who are currently running 11th and 12th so Aldegar must be thinking leave it as long as possible I might just be able to feed myself into that gap well he's locked into damage limitation mode isn't he big style here as Gonzalez comes from a long way back on the guru nice nice move uh, by the pole position rider uh, Gonzalez has had good pace all weekend as well so having worked his way through a bit of early traffic as Agura goes sideways into turn three we're on board now with the Japanese rider on the steep climb up through turn four and then it's downhill it's big downhill braking zone so easy to wash out the front here so that's Gonzalez just ahead of Ayagura there, okay. just in your picture as well as Kinnett in second place just out of your shot briefly there you can just see him over Gonzalez's left shoulder is your race leader Lopez Kinnett's very good in that final sector by the way all that time that Lopez gained on him in the first three splits on the last lap Kinnett just snatched it straight back again through those final right handers so the lead over the line for Lopez was four tenths of a second he was quicker in three quarters of the lap but across the line Kinnett actually did a faster lap time than him 
It's been a very impressive transition, hasn't it, from a Calex to a Boscoscura chassis by the man we're riding on board with right now, Ayagura, fourth and close to the podium in his first Grand Prix for the Italian chassis brand in Qatar, and right in the hunt again here for the podium. He won't want it to be back-to-back -back force. He'll want some post-race Prosecco here in Portimao. He's got his hands full though, hasn't he? Dealing with Roberts behind him as well. Aldeguer then does peel in to the long lap penalty loop for the final, or what he hopes will be the final double long lap, well, long lap penalty. I'll tell you what, Lewis. It's dirty, it's so isn't dirty it? out there as well, of course, with all the, the overnight rain that we had on Thursday night, which basically turned this Portimao track into a mud bath, let's be honest. Slotted in behind Barry Baltus there, did Aldeguer, so he's now in 13th position and free to race from there, but a long, long way back from that particular position. Once again on that last lap, Kinnett was ever so slightly quicker than Lopez. Fastest rider on track, though, certainly fastest rider amongst our leading contenders was Joe Roberts, who did a 142.507, three tenths quicker than the leader. He's the last rider in this leading group of five. There he is on the 16 bike, just trying to work out how he can get through Onagura. Kind of holding station out the front, isn't it? Sixth place for Reynas. He's still keeping himself in the 42s, desperately trying to make sure he clings onto the tail of Roberts. He's got his hands full holding off his former Moto 3 foe as well, number 14 there, just coming through turn seven. Tony Arbolino, who after an early spurt of pace has dropped back into the 43s Arbolino and that's sort of curtailed his early charge Arbolino has been stuck in seventh now for a couple of laps yeah it still feels like we're seeing a sort of phony war here before it really kicks off later on in the race I think there's some very clear caution here no one's too keen to go too hard too soon on these tyres at the moment the leading nine riders are still within 2.7 seconds on circuit all the way back down to Jeremy Alcoba in ninth place so Fermin Aldegar despite serving his too long lap penalty He's only five seconds off the race lead. Not a bad pace, though. We're only just over a second away from the pole time, which was a 141.5. On well, that last lap, Lopez, a 42.7. But yeah, tyre preservation is going to be a factor at the end of this Grand Prix. We're back on board Agura through this wonderful turn 15. You can just hear him now. He'll start clicking through the gears. Over the blind crest we go. Fifth. He'll hit six then and that Triumph 765cc three-cylinder ranger screams, doesn't it? Aldeguer now in recovery mode. That was imitation mode, as we said. Fastest rider on circuit, a 142.455 from Aldeguer. Surely he's going to be looking at minimum here, top 10, if not better. He's coming through now on Sergio Garcia, who we're looking back from. We're now going to have to look ahead to see the 54 of Fermin Aldeguer. So that's Boscoscoro versus Boscoscoro. Aldeguer has got no choice here, has he? He can't think about managing his ties to the end of Grand Prix. He's just got to go for it and try and salvage any points he can. That's now 11th place. Yeah, next up ahead of him is Chantra. Roberts has passed Agora out of picture, by the way. So Joe Roberts now up into fourth position. He's got great pace at this stage of the race. And Agora, who we were riding on board with around half a lap ago, has now dropped back. So both of the MT helmets, MSI, Boscus Goros, have lost a place in the first half of this lap. There is Chandra on the 35 bike. He might find it a bit of a complex mission, keeping the hard-charging Aldeguer behind him. A little bit unsettled was the rear for Aldeguer as he went over the crest into turn 10. This has been impressive by Roberts. He sounded, well, he sounded like he was oozing confidence on the grid, didn't he, when he spoke to Simon Crayfart. And at the moment, he's living up to the pre-race billing. Now up into fourth. Oh, oh that's oh. tight, isn't it? Really, really tight. The girl's going the wrong way here. He's trying to top it out with Albert Arenas. Of course, they were fighting for the Moto 3 World Championship here four years ago in Portimao. Agura comes out the better of it, although does he? Yeah, he's just going to seize and snatch that inside line on Arenas as they come out of turn 15. At the front, though, it's Lopez, just under four tenths clear of Kinnett in turn. He's about half a second ahead of Gonzalez. Aldeguer once again. Fastest rider on circuit, a 142.445. This time, Arenas does go through on Ayagura. That one started about four corners earlier. Agura got turn 13 all wrong. He was wrong footed for the remainder of the lap. Arenas just didn't dare stick his front wheel up the inside of Agura through that long turn 15. He decided to wait until the start of finish straight. Aldeguer, moments after setting that fast lap, has now passed Somkiat Chantry. He must have got him into turn one. So Aldeguer now up into the top 10. Yellow flags are out though somewhere behind this leading group who's gone down in the first half of this lap 
Yeah, can't see anybody's name tumbling down the timing channel. The left hand side screen is Chavi Cardaloose, unfortunately. She was circulating for Fantac Racing down in 25th spot, so uh, Cardaloose has bailed out. See confirmation on your screens there. That's why the yellow flags are out in sectors one and two. So now then, Aldeguer starting to work his way now towards Marcos Ramirez as he tries to pick up as many points as he possibly can after the double long lap penalty. Was it Dennis Foggia here in Motor 3 he back did. in the... Keeping out of your picture, up the hill through turn four, over the line, the gap between the two of them was nine tenths of a second, that's close, so that was Aldeguer putting one on Sonkiat Chantra, the Chantra had to pick it up there, didn't he, but uh, nothing you do, Aldeguer just had by far the better speed, and that's shoved Chantra outside the top ten as it stands right now. Yeah, I'm coming through and there's nothing you can do about it, it was Fermin Aldeguer's message there, and Sonkiat Chantra had no option but to heed that message. It's starting to split up a little bit in this leading group as the race leaders on the top four are able to hold this pace in the mid 42s. The riders immediately behind them, including this group, are starting to slip into the 43s, in particular Ogura and Arbolino, who are up behind a rain ass here. The battle for fifth, sixth and seventh. Alcoba's doing 42 sevens behind them and closing in on the back of this trio. Someone's down. Yeah, somebody has gone down. Oh, oh, it's Lopez! Alonso Lopez has crashed out of the lead. Well, can you believe this? Alonso Lopez, what a day it's turning out to be for the Bosca Scorer team. A double long lap penalty for Fermin Aldeguer and crashing out of a lead of over half a second into turn 13. He goes trail breaking in. Maybe was he slightly offline on a slightly dirty part of the circuit, but that is a big, big blunder, isn't it, for Bosca Scorers? Alonso Lopez, he was on course to make it two wins out of two to kick off 2024 and build a healthy early World Championship lead. But their day goes from bad to worse. Yeah, the only good news I can give Luca Vosk's score at the moment is that Aldegar has just said another fastest lap of the Grand Prix in eighth. He's now doing 42 twos. Cadet now leading this race does a 42 eight out front. It's Joe Roberts now into second place, who's passed, of course, Gonzalez at the start of the previous lap. So. Boy, what an opportunity not here for Aaron Kinnett, who has so often crashed out of leads himself. This time, he's on the receiving end of a gift from the race leader. Well, surely now, this is going to be one of the best chances he has ever had to finally end this long, long victory search in the Moto2 World Championship. 15 times he's had to stand in second place on the podium in the Intermediate World Championship. But here we are, then, with nine and a half laps to go. After Lopez's big blunder at turn 13, it leaves Connect comfortably at the front of this Grand Prix. But it, of course, in turn, the Lopez error will really light up the eyes of Robertson Gonzalez as well. In fact, straight away through the first three quarters of this lap 12, Roberts has found three tenths on Kinnett. This is not a given that Kinnett's going to get this job done. Surely, surely not. Yeah. Another second no. place coming. And I'm going to ask a pretty speculative question. It may be a bit of a fanciful one. Confirming Aldegar still win this race from where he is. He's 3.4 seconds now off the race leader. You've got the gap from Aldegar to the leader on the left-hand side of your screen. It was four seconds when this lap began. He's now taken another seven tenths out of it. It's going to be another fastest lap, I'm sure, for Fermin Aldegar or something very close to it. It's another one. 
42-2, very close to the fastest lap he set a lap ago. Aldeguer was the best part of a second quicker than the leader last time around. Yeah, aside from Aldeguer, the only other riders in the 42s in the top 10 on that lap were Roberts in second place and Sergio Garcia in 10th place, who's really starting to find some serious rhythm at this stage of the Grand Prix. Connect was back in the 143s. I just wonder whether maybe he was slightly distracted by the Lopez instant, but Roberts just over six tenths back he was as we start lap 13 of 21. Aldegaard's through on Alcoba now, he's up into seventh place. The obvious question for Aldegaard from where he is is just how long can he sustain this pace and not take too much out of his tyres? As I mentioned earlier on, he's not really got much of a choice. He's just got to go for it and try and repair the damage from his jump start early on, but he's now into seventh. I think at the very least, he must be thinking from where he is now, a podium's not out of the question. Well, if he's got the rubber underneath him at the end of this Grand Prix, well, anything's possible, isn't it? Sparks fly as he goes through turn nine. Oh, Avelino oh, coming through. Oh, oh, that was really, really close. And that's going to be a through. free spot there, isn't it, for Aldegat? Didn't even have to work for it because Avelino was millimetres away, wasn't there, from clipping the back of Arenas' machine. So that's another place that's been gifted here to Aldegat. And the, the rate that he's closing in on the lead group here, but he's got time. It's just a question now of how much abusing he's doing on these Pirelli tyres. If he's going to have the rubber left at the end of the Grand Prix or not, that's going to be the $64,000 question, yeah. isn't it, for Aldegaard? I'll tell you what, the rate he's catching, the last thing you want to be doing is giving Fermi Aldegaard three positions, as Arvelino did there. Of course, he was worried about not running into the back of Arenas. It was a 1.42.5 that time for Aldegaard, so it was slightly slower than those 42 twos he was doing previously. He was still four tenths quicker, though, than Kinect out front. And once again, in the top 10, the only riders in the 42s are Kinect, Roberts and Garcia. And now he's just making light work of Arenas. He'll run in a little bit wide, but he knows he's going to have the inside line now as they climb up through turn four. This would be an astonishing victory, wouldn't it? If he has come through the long lap penalty twice after the jump start, if he can salvage a, a podium, let alone a win, would feel like a massive, massive plus for Aldeguer. As Arbolino now tries to tough it out with Alcoba, trying to regroup after his near contact with Arenas on the previous lap. Aldeguer then is inside the top six. 2.7 seconds is the gap to bridge to connect the leader. You can see a penalty icon next to Celestino Vietti's name on the tower. He's been told to drop a position. He overtook under yellow flags, presumably, where Alonso Lopez crashed. There's your confirmation at the bottom of your screen. So he's about to let Sonkat Chantra back through. So Vietti looking at top 10, if he's lucky at the moment, and he's about to drop from 11th down into 12th place. Paying for a, a poor start to this Grand Prix is, is Garcia because he's got, without question, race winning pace at this stage of the race. He's kept himself down those 142s for a good three or four laps. Garcia, though, dropped down to 11th in the early on. He's only recovered up to 10th place and been helped by a couple of instants ahead of him. But without any question, he's, he's got speed here that's good enough for the top three once again. Over the line we come then. Your race leader, Connect, will tick off lap 14 of 21. Two thirds distance completed here at the Algarve International Circuit. Aldegar has found another a three tenths of a second on that previous lap. This is game on. The gap down of 2.4 seconds, seven laps to go. Yeah, he needs around four to five tenths a lap to catch Connect from here. If Connect can keep it in the 42s, he should have enough to hold up Aldegar. At the moment, I think Connect's just worried about Roberts and Gonzalez behind him. I'd love to know if the Fantic team are keeping Connect abreast of the gap back to Aldegar, who's in fifth place now. In a lap or two's time, Aldegar is going to be up behind Agora in the battle for fourth place. Yeah, Joe Roberts just cannot get that gap to connect down to under six tenths. In fact, through the first split on this lap 15, it's actually grown up to nearly eight tenths of a second. Uh, so connect, keeping himself in those 42s. That was the first time that Roberts, I think, in this Grand Prix has dipped into the 43s. Is he just running out of a bit of traction as we move into the crucial final phase of this Grand Prix? Gonzalez very close there up behind Joe Roberts. Perhaps Gonzalez is the likeliest threat here to connect amongst our leading three. Gonzalez clearly looks like he's keen to get on with this. Aldeguer at this stage of this lap not making particularly big inroads into Ogura. The gap between the pair of them is still 
half a second. So Kinnett at the moment in a fairly comfortable position out front. The lead is hovering around that sort of seven tenth mark over Joe Roberts. It looks like the greatest threat is the top three. It's going to come from Gonzalez. Center Aegis, another rider that's going to have to demote one position for overtaking under a yellow flag. He joins Celestin of Vietti with that particular penalty. Gonzalez, you've got to give full credit here to Joe Roberts because Gonzalez just cannot get close enough to show the American his front wheel can he? He's going to try and pick up some slipstream here now. They move side by side, drop down the hill into first corner and finally Gonzalez then has made the move. You just wondered there as Roberts was struggling to keep himself in the 42s while Kinnett was doing so but the Gonzalez thought, right, it's now or never. I've got to get on with this now because Kinnett is just quite comfortably managing his advantage. He's just pulling that little bit of a gap over Joe Roberts. So if I'm to win, this Grand Prix of him to deny Aaron Connect. I have to get through quickly on Roberts and that was job done Gonzalez second and Roberts is the slowest rider in this leading group of six at the moment the other five are in the 42s 43-1 for Joe Roberts fastest rider on track at the moment is outside of Aldeguer of course who's still doing 42-5s it's Celestino Vietti who's just served that penalty of letting Chantra back through immediately passed him again and did a 142-7 much like Qatar there are going to be riders in this race with late race pace who are just going to come zoom into contention. Davide Tardotsi looking on at potentially one of his future employees in the factory Ducati team of course. Next two years he's going to Prima Pramac but Ducati getting some serious transfer business done very early in this 2024 World Championship. They've already signed, sealed and locked in Pekka Bagnai, the world champion for the two years. They've been quick to move on Fermin Aldeguer. Well, they got that paperwork signed all back in January, we're told, by Fermin himself. And Davide Tardotsi has to be impressed with this awesome recovery job that's being done right now by the number 54 bike. He, he's certainly in the hunt here for the podium. Well, Gonzalez is starting to chip away at Cadet's lead now that he's gone through on Joe Roberts. He's taken a quarter of a second off him so far on this lap. I remember Cadet is very good in this final sector as they cross the line. It's just under 7 tenths. So Gonzalez did pull a tenth and a half back on Aaron Cadet on that last lap. They must be chewing their fingernails down to the quick down at Fantic Racing and in the Aaron Cadet camp. They must dare watch this Grand Prix as they watch him close in on this first win. It's all Constantine ring up, isn't it, between the pursuing pack. Gonzalez has not been able to drop Joe Roberts directly behind him. Even Sasaki has crashed out. The, the rookie for the VR46 Mastercam team, Sasaki, was down in 24th place. Alonso Lopez did remount, although he's a couple of laps down. That's going to push him up to about 25th. But a day to forget for Lopez when he was looking so, so good at the front of this Grand Prix, crashing out the lead at turn 13. And will Aaron connect? gratefully received the present that was handed to him over we go down through turn 12 let's pull the pin on this lap is connect this is the incident further back or it's just a nice arty slow-mo of Fermi Aldeguer who's really pushing hard the sparks coming from the boots of Aldeguer as he's now right on the back of Agura but Kinect's lead is up and over one second on this lap is Kinect making a crucial break with five to go that's been some response this hasn't it from Kinect Gonzalez getting through. Kinect would have seen that the gap was down to around six tenths of a second once again, and he has pushed on this current lap. This may be the decisive move. Vantage through the third sector was nearly nine and a half tenths. Bit of, of a gap then between Gonzalez and Roberts now, about what, 10 bike lengths between those two in the five for second place. We're looking back from Magura's Bosca Scorer chassis at the Bosca Scorer of Fermin Aldeguer. Fifth place after two long laps. He's going to try and pick up some slipstream here behind Aguri. He won't be close enough to attack the Japanese rider on the brakes into turn one. Kinect's lead then to start laps 18 to 21 was just a whisker under a second. Yeah, Kinect's doing such a good job here. He's barely been out of the four. 42s in this entire Grand Prix and that's all he needs to do I think at this stage of the race if he can continue to lap in the 42s to the end of this race he will win it because Gonzalez did a 43-1 last time around the only other riders in the 42s were Agora and Aldeguer who are currently too busy watching each other down we go through the turn five Agora he will not want back-to-back -back four plays it's good for the championship good for the early points all but it would certainly have fancied a crack maybe at Gonzalez and Roberts late on here, but he may well be getting pushed back to fifth very, very quickly because all over his rear tyre is number 54 of Fermin Aldeguer. Through turn nine they go. Once again, the sparks fly from Aldeguer. They're a long, long way ahead now. They've comfortably dropped the Arenas 
Ramirez Garcia battle. And Sergio Garcia is upwardly mobile once again. He's now picked off Jeremy Alcova and Marcos Ramirez. And Garcia is up into seventh place. He's had podium speed, no question. He's paid for a very poor first three or four laps as the Spanish rider. And once again, not to the same extent as Qatar two weeks ago, Tony Arbolino is dropping down the order like a lift with the cable cut. He's down to 11th place now. He dropped behind Vietti, Alcova and Garcia on the previous lap. So for the second Grand Prix in a row, Tony Arbolino out of the top 10 and just holding on, if he can, to some small points. Three to go. Dare we dream that Aaron Kinesk can <laughs> finally be a Moto2 race winner here in Portimao. He's 1.2 seconds clear of what was Manu Gonzalez, but Joe Roberts, is. does he still feel like he's got enough rubber left to maybe hunt down Aaron Kinnett for the race win. Oh, Back up in a second. Aldeguer up ahead of Aligora now. That's been one of the favoured passing points for Fermi and Aldeguer. So it's Boscoscoro versus Boscoscoro for fourth. They're side by side. And Agora not living this one without a fight. Back up the inside, out of turn four into five. So Aldeguer, who's been just passing people at will so far in this Grand Prix, not getting much change out of Agora so far. Kinnett surely has got this covered now. The battle that Roberts had with Gonzalez has given him another two tenths in the first sector alone on this third lap. Overtaking under a yellow flag. Long lap penalty now for Senor Aegis. I'm guessing that maybe he didn't drop the one yeah, position third lap. sufficiently in uh, time. So, two and a half laps to go here. Aldegay, he made the hard move on Agura into turn three. It lost him his speed up the hill through four, so Agura was just able to keep his acceleration and drive grip and just ease back on through. And Aldegay has not been able to respond here, as he is. This is a proper good battle, this, isn't it, between Roberts and Gonzalez, which is playing right into the hands of your race leader, Connect, because now his lead has crept up to over one and a half seconds. Is Aldegay's rear tyre finally now starting to cry enough because he's starting to lose a a little bit of touch now with Ayagura. He launched that raid up the inside into turn number three. Agura thwarted that initial challenge, and so far on this lap, Aldegar has fallen. The best part of half a second off the back of Agura. So has Aldegar's charge finally met its match? Yeah, this looks like it's game over. 1.6 seconds was Connect's very healthy advantage. It might be the front tyre that's yeah. gone for Aldegar. Look at the wear on the right-hand side of that Pirelli front tyre for Fermin Aldegar. He might just now say, yeah, Double on that penalty, top five, more than enough. Oh, as that's a through. proper block pass from Agura. At the bottom of your picture there from the helicopter shot, Agura charging through on Gonzalez. A lap and a half to go here. Connect your runaway leader. Simon, quickly down to you. Yeah, with about seven laps to go, you could see uh, Aaron Kinnett and Ayagura with the stronger front tyre floating, you know, basically being stronger. And I think that's pretty clear from the shot we saw of... Uh, uh, Eldegar's front tyre. Yeah, thanks very much, Simon. Gonzalez having a proper scrap here for the final place on the podium with Agura. Joe Roberts looks like he might have a safe second place in his pocket now after an excellent weekend for Roberts. Fifth on the grid, backing it up with another podium here in Portimao. Who will snatch the final place on the rostrum? Gonzalez, who we're looking forward to now, under pressure from Agura. Yeah, Aldegar has dropped over half a second now behind Agura, who we're riding on board with, so it just looks like he has run out of rear grip. Stunning recovery, though, stunning ride by Aldegar, showing exactly why Ducati had been very eager uh, to get him signed up on a two-year contract as Gonzalez. He almost went to the moon, didn't he? And that lets Agura through now into third place once again. It looked more like a bucking bronco than a Boscoscoro for Aldeguer as he came up over the rise towards turn nine and ten. One lap to go for Aaron Kinnett. The torture of waiting for that first Grand Prix win in Moto2 might only be one more lap away from ending. Here comes Gonzalez once again finding a way back through on Agura down the end of breaking zone for the first corner. Proper good battle this, isn't it, for the final place on the podium, which Aldeguer yeah, has right still got a proper it. genuine crack here hasn't he Aldeguer where will he potentially feel like he can make the move turn five is a wonderful oh Agura almost well, he off. was properly out of sea there and Aldeguer then gets up into fourth he had to run wide or was going to charge in the back of Agura there wasn't he so now it is Aldeguer up into fourth he's even running out of time though to rescue a stunning podium here as Aaron Kinnett powers towards an unforgettable first win here in Portimao yeah, he had to go off the circuit but he was simply taking avoiding action there, so Aldegar will have a 
happily accept those two extra points for fourth place. 13 points out of this, given how he started this race by literally jumping it, would be quite a recovery for Aldeguer. Roberts nowhere near threatening Aaron Kinnett, who's just got about a five corners to go before he can finally taste that podium Prosecco as a winner in Moto2. Here he goes then. Two corners left into turn 13, where he was gifted the lead by the mistake by Alonso Lopez. Oh, Agura goes full speedway <laughs> start. That's not going to work. 10 out of 10 Why for not? effort, I, but hey ho, it's the last lap and he went all in. Fermin Aldegar then will salvage a brilliant fourth place here after his two long laps in this dramatic Portimao Grand Prix. But he knows he's got the job done for the first time. It's fantastic for Fantic Racing as Aaron Kinnett is finally a Moto2 race winner. Brilliant performance by the Spanish rider. Look what it means down in Fantic Racing. And after all the near misses, all the close calls, all the heartache, Aaron Kinnett is a Moto2 winner for the very first time. What do they say? Good things come to those who wait. Brilliant ride by Kinect, taking advantage of the vital mistake when leading by Alonso Lopez. Joe Roberts takes second place. Brilliant race by the Californian. Manu Gonzalez, excellent weekend for him. Pole position and the podium. Aldegues, sensational fight back. Yeah, no track limit sanction, of course, as mentioned for Fermin Aldeguer, because he was going off to avoid Ayagura, taking avoiding action, so no penalty. But this is as cool as it gets. That does a lot like a rider that's never won a Moto2 race, does it? Classy connect here <laughs> in Portimao. Left foot off the foot peg. <laughs> a nice little wave as well. The acknowledgement to the crowd with the left hand, and that is such a special feeling. After all... Of the near misses, as we mentioned, he's been 15 times runner up, and it is going to be a great feeling. Fermin Aldeguer, then that's a brilliant fourth place for him. That will feel like 25 points, let alone 13, because that was one outstanding recovery. Absolutely brilliant by Aldeguer. Really, really strong ride. And just at the point where we thought he was fading with with grit, which he clearly was, he was still able to keep himself in that podium battle. This will be a very emotional podium, you feel, particularly for that man, Aaron Kinnett, who has had to deal with thousands upon thousands of questions. We've all posed them, guilty ourselves in this yeah. comedy box. When will he finally be a winner in the Mother 2 World Championship? Well, today, that long, long wait has finally come to a glorious conclusion as Aaron Kinnett comes to Park Ferme for what is going to feel like one of the best feelings of his career. And to boot, he leads the Mother 2 World Championship as well, going to Austin in two weeks' time. Joe Roberts, this is a good one for American fans, isn't it? Roberts on the podium, is second in the World Championship as well, heading to Austin. As Aaron Kinnett then now, it'll all start to sink in. He'll start to feel that special <laughs> moment. Oh, he's just tripped over the car. <laughs> Well, that's 70 Grand Prix of frustration, isn't it, in Moto2 for Aaron Kinnett, all being unleashed. Yeah, now, look, 
<laughs> Let's try and keep all the advertising hoardings intact <laughs> here. Uh, Aaron. Was like the Tasmanian devil there, wasn't he? <laughs> he is. Well, you know what? That's that's just 75 Grand Prix of a release. Fr- release, yeah. And that is what you properly call a weight off his shoulder. That's going to feel like a ton of bricks has been lifted off the shoulders of Aaron Connect. That was a really good weekend, a real strong performance that by Joe Roberts, really good. The bricks, what a way to go to your home Grand Prix in Austin, Texas in a few weeks' time. There were so many standout rides in that 21 laps. This man was right up there leading that candidate. That was brilliant. Yeah, next time he'll be there. What might have been. A double long lap penalty after the jump start for Fermin Aldegate. There is a replay, then it was clear, wasn't it? He'll have no qualms about that, of course. Two long laps though for the jump start and what followed was just a brilliant recovery. That was the first long lap that he took, which dropped him briefly outside of the top ten. He'd slotted in behind Thai rider Somkiat Chantra. Maybe I could catch Kinnett, but I was just struggling to keep the, the life in the front. So, uh, but man, what a race. So happy for my team. It's the first podium back with these guys, and they've just been, since Hareth, we've just done such an amazing job getting this bike uh, working for me. And uh, man, yeah, I'm so excited for the next round at, at home. I hope you all bought your tickets for Coda because we're bringing the fight there. That's for sure. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks.
Yeah, that was an awesome job by Joe Roberts. And I'm sure the promoters of the Austin Grand Prix <laughs> Circuit of the Americas are, are very happy because I'm sure Joe Roberts is going to put a few more bums on the seats uh, when we head stateside across the Atlantic in a couple of weeks' time. As he mentioned there, I, I was in that club as well, Joe. When he got through in Gonzalez, I wondered if he did have the pace late on to hunt down Aaron Kinnett, but just not quite there. But finally, we can say Aaron Kinnett, a moto... Kembali lagi guys, Redspark hari ini tampil solid ya Redspark tampil solid dan berhasil mengalahkan tamunya Pink Speeder 3-1 guys Redspark hari ini tampil solid ya Mengalahkan Pink Speeder 3-1 di kandangnya Di kandang Pink Speeder 3-1 guys Bisa di tempat tadi membantu susah ya seorang Pertama Terima kasih yang sudah mau nonton, mau like dan mau subscribe di channel saya ini. Semoga channel saya berkembang ya. Terima kasih, sampai jumpa, semoga teman-teman semua sehat selalu, sampai jumpa di kesempatan berikutnya, live berikutnya ya, sampai jumpa di live berikutnya, tadi walaupun live saya sempat putus ya, gak tahu tadi sempat sempat putus di tengah jalan ya, di set ketiga tadi, di akhir di set ketiga, oke okay guys, sampai jumpa di pertemuan berikutnya, bye bye ya, see you next live ya, ntar live jam 9 ya guys ya, saya ada live lagi jam 9, oke okay, dadah.